trays, sit down. Copy down the, you guys the, have the, the warm up. Hey, I forgot my glasses. Really there is a seat right there. That one's hard. There's one right here. Turn the desk. Face. Right here. Turn the desk. Face. Sorry. Heck, I thought I forged it. He, like, he was looking at me, looked down at it, looked at me, he's like, Did you write this? I was like, No. And he's like, Okay, you can go. And then, like, he's just staring me down the entire time. I went to go get my bag. Wait, I'm like, do you want me to write something? I can show you my paper. He's like, no, you wrote it. I'm like, okay. What class? Culinary. Wilcox? Yeah, but there's this, uh, uh, Wilcox could have been, you wouldn't have maybe get enough. Yeah, you wouldn't care. He's kind of scary. He's also friendly about it. He's cool. He's, he's all right, I guess. He used to hit on Sam all the time. All right. Could you sit down and stop being distracting? He hasn't read a single word of the book since we read it together. <coughs> I look over, like, I'm like eight minutes into my writing, and I look over, and he's just staring at his paper, and he looks up at me. I'm like, did you not read? He goes, I read the first oh, chapter, <laughs> and I was like, you read it together. Dude, Seth is a football player. I don't know why he doesn't play. He's a dude with a why, bro? He's so It's actually nice outside. It is pretty nice outside. Thank you for that piece of information. Thank you, ma'am. The wind is warm. All right, Davis. Brooke. We have two cars, same type of car. So they both follow the same distribution for their nitrogen oxide levels. They both have a normal distribution with a mean 1.4 standard deviation of 0.3. Two of the same type of car go in to get tested for their nitrogen oxide levels. One of them gets a measurement of 1.1. The other one gets a measurement of 1.9. We're curious what the probability is that the difference is at least as large. So the difference, 1.9 minus 1.1, is 0.8. Difference tells us it's a subtraction problem. Since they both have the same distribution to begin with, when we subtract, our mean becomes 0. We take the standard deviation of 0.3 squared plus 0.3 squared and square root it to get 0.4243 for the standard deviation. So Naomi drew the normal curve. Now it says at least as large as 0.8. So that could mean that car A is 0.8 or more above car B for its nitrogen oxide or car B could be 0.8 or above part A for its nitrogen oxide. So we do shade both sides. She used normal CDF to find this area, but then notice she put times two at the end so that we get the area in both tails, which is 0 0.0594. <coughs> Bless you. Sorry. You should be. Questions? Yell at you? Yeah. Were you mean to her? No, you just like snapped her head. Oh. Yeah, but it's.
right, today we're going to look at some new types of variables called binomial variables. So the first thing we're going to do is learn the four criteria that need to be met for a variable to be binomial. Okay. First criteria is binary. What does binary mean? Uh, two. Two. So binary code means you work with zeros and ones. Two numbers, only two options, zero or one. So here binary means that each observation falls into one of just two categories. We call those categories success or failure. Independent. The N observations are all independent, meaning what? What did independent mean in chapter five? Oh, um, they don't correlate. Not quite. Kinda, maybe. If by correlate you mean knowing that one happened has no effect on the next one happening, then we would agree. Finish the year? I'm to be your third block. Oh. Because I'm because sure. And why do you want to be my aide, Davis? Because I'm going to drop this class. No. Yeah, that's not happening. Okay. Okay. That's not happening. N number. There is a fixed number N of trials or observations. They use those words interchangeably. And then success, the probability of success, which we use P for, is the same for each trial. Binary, B, independent, I, number, N, success, S, bins. Can we go over effect and affect again? No. I still don't understand. Either do I. And look. I'm a successful person in life. It's okay. Uh, wow, <laughs> Colton. You beat dogs, so. You can ask your English teacher that. Because oh, honestly, cool. Trey, I couldn't explain it to you. I have a cheat sheet. I have a cheat sheet over here that a student gave me last year. You can take a picture. I... This thought like, I'd reference this it. This box would yeah. slap me and, silly. And then I went, eh, it's not worth learning. Uh, eh. Effect oh is God. like cause and effect. Or right? you the best. Effect yeah. is like emotion. Okay, but who went out of their way to do that? Um, one of my students who graduated last year who is going to study to be a linguistic. What is so, that? Study language. We already do like six effect, languages. Effect All right. <clears throat> so if I ask you to check if a variable is binomial or if it meets the binomial setting, you check bins. Trey. Binomial distributions. We're going to change from normal distributions to binomial distributions. A binomial distribution is the distribution of the count X of successes in the binomial setting. I said that backwards, but I said a binomial setting is, and I wrote it the other way for filling in the blank. A binomial distribution has two parameters. They are N and P. 
<coughs> the parameter n is the number of trials or observations. And the parameter p is the probability of success. The possible values for x are the whole numbers, 0 through whatever our n is. Whole numbers, I put my s in the wrong spot, 0 to n. The number of trials. So just like we had an abbreviation for a normal distribution, we have one for a binomial distribution, capital B for binomial, and then we put n comma p. I see. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at four situations and see if they actually meet the binomial setting. I'm going to do the first one with you and then you're going to try two, three, and four with your neighbor. So, um, I'm pretty sure you guys know I'm like a checklist type person. So when I'm checking the binomial setting, I'm going to go through and check that bins is met. Alright. <clears throat> You observe the sex of the next 20 children born at a local hospital. X is the number of girls among them. So B, binary. What would be a success and what would be a failure? Success is a girl, failure is a boy. I know, right? It always works out like this. Yeah, it's always like this. Huh, I wonder why. Do you make these? Yes! <laughs> Purposely make boys failures in my example? Yes. <laughs> I have two failures if I think about it that way. I only got one girl. Oh dear lord. We're still stuck on that? Independent. Knowing that the first baby was a girl, does that change the probability the next baby's a girl? No. No. So... We have independence. <laughs> and do we have a fixed number of trials or observations? Sometimes. 20. We're only looking at the next 20 children born. So N is 20. Oh, oh dear Lord, Colton. Do you want to call boys failures? S is probability of success. What's the probability we get a girl? Point five. So this example does meet the criteria for being a binomial distribution. We're not solving anything yet. We're just making sure it's binomial. What's a to be? Right? Okay. Is this n equals 20? You really do need your glasses. No, no, no. no, no look he look goes down to the same boat over there. I thought it was a yeah, B2. Thank you. Thank you. When have I ever made an A like that? When have you ever made a zero like that? When have you ever made sense? All oh, oh, the time. No. I can't remember the last time I've like grasped the concept of this class. It's been that crazy. doesn't mean I don't make sense. Who in here can grasp the concept of this class? Put your hand in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. A plus one, for like 25, this quarter. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you didn't raise your hand early enough. I did. It was like right here. <laughs> 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 
You guys are gonna check bins for two, three, and four. Check bins. Check bins. Check bins. This one's gonna be no, this one's for cool Wow. Well, I mean, she's, 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 she's
number, which is why Davis put none. At that point, it doesn't matter to keep going through, so he just put an X for us. So that one is not. This one also is not. Um, binary, sure, you can get it wrong or right. So we have the success failure. Um, N, we have a fixed number. It's a 12 question quiz. I, it's not independent. She gets an explanation and an additional instruction before moving on. So in theory, she should do better, right? So her probability of success increases. If you don't like that explanation, does it specify the questions? Maybe the first question is true or false. So she has 50-50 chance. And the next question is an A, B, C, D multiple choice. So she only has a 25% chance of getting it right. There is nothing that specifies that the probability of success is going to be the same for each question. Number four, 
When I was walking around, not all of you had finished number four yet. Uh, how many of you say yes, it is binomial? Raise your hand. No. Me. Davis and Katiara. Well, good job, Davis and Katiara. It is a binomial distribution. The binary, there is good switches and bad switches. Are you on like... Number four. Good switches, bad switches. I you were writing on the no, I was writing her pass. So good, we'll say, is a success. Bad is a failure. Independent, does knowing that one switch I pulled is good or bad change the probability of the next one? No. Not really. It changes it so slightly that it doesn't really count. How many switches is the guy looking at? Eight. And what's the probability it's a bad switch or a good switch? I defined good as the success, so my probability is success would be 0.9 because it tells us 10 are bad, 10% are bad. Wait, how'd you get it? Point 0.9? Well, it tells me 10% are bad, but I defined good as a success. So if 10% are bad, that means 90% are good. So 0.9. Because oh. S is the probability of success, not failure. Got you. This is, this is understandable. All right, so now we're going to look at an example and actually find a probability for a binomial variable. Can I flip? Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to say, can I flip? And somebody's going to say yes. And I'm going to get on the ground and do a flip. Wow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <on that. laughs> Trey. What? Like a somersault? Well, yeah, I'm not fancy like you. I don't know. I, it would be a forward somersault. And I would probably bring in some foam matting to cushion the floor. Ow! But the, the floor is hard, Ashley. But don't. You're still hurt. Don't. Don't. All right. So... Um, for this one, we're going to look at the probability. We have each child of a particular, Brooke, particular pair of parents has probability 0.25 of having type O blood. Genetics says that children receive genes from each of their parents independently. If these parents have five children, the count X of children with type O blood is a binomial random variable with N equaling five trials and probability P equals 0.25 of a success oh on each trial. In this setting, a child with type O blood is considered a success. A child with another blood type would be considered a failure. We want to find the probability that x equals 2. So first of all, it tells us it's binomial, but let's just practice checking. We have success is type O blood. <laughs> Failure would be not type O. What other types there are? A, A, B, B. Not typo. Oops. Sorry. Alex here. The same pass I wrote for Alec. Who are you talking to? To Megan. I, independent, it tells us in here that we can assume it's independent, so we're just going to put quotations around it. N number of trials, which it tells us N equals 5. 
And then S, probability of success, tells us P equals 0.25. So bins is met. We want to find the probability that two kids have type O blood. So in S and F, success and failure, we want to find the probability of two successes, three failures. So what is the probability of success? 0.25. Remember from chapter 5, if we know probabilities are independent, we can just multiply them. So I have one success, then I'm going to multiply by another success, and then I have a failure, a failure, and a failure. Or to simplify that a little, we have probability of success raised to the power of 2, because we had two successes. And then the probability of failure raised to a 3, because we had three failures. I'm going to put my calculator in the way, sorry. Okay. 0.25 squared, 0.75 cubed. And then I'm going to multiply that by that, and we get 0 0.0264 if I round. <laughs> Questions? Yes. What did I assume? Um, well, we know they're going to have five kids, so we want to find the probability that two of them are successes. Which are girls? No, in this case it's type O blood. I know. Um, you would that? my successes necessarily be the first two kids born? Wait, no. Would the successes necessarily be the no. first two kids no. who are born? No. So I didn't take into account all the different arrangements of having five children with two successes. But would that change anything? Of course it would. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it up. How would that change anything? We'll see in a minute. Now, unfortunately, my box below that box didn't show up well. There is a box here. That's so we can list our sample space of all the different ways that we can have two kids with type O blood out of five kids total. So remember, we use S to mean sample space. I gave you one arrangement. The first two kids have type O blood, and then the last three don't. There could also be the first one does, second one doesn't, third one does, last two don't. Or the first and the fourth have type O, or the first and the last. Now that takes care of all the arrangements where the first kid's a success. So now I'm going to move on to the first kid being a failure. Kids two and three are successes. So much. What the fuck? Hey, man. <laughs> Whoa. This is just combinations. No, what the middle of the week? We could have kids two and four are successful or two and five. And that it's takes care of all the combinations where the first success is kid number two. Really? 
So then we're going to move on to kid number three being the first success. So three and four, or it could be three and five. Yeah, they're having five kids. It's a lot of kids. It is a lot of kids. Or we could have the first three be failures and the last two successes. So how many combinations were there? A lot. You can count that high. There were only 10 combinations. So really the probability that two kids were successes, typo blood, still going to be the probability of success raised to the power of 2, because we have two successes. Probability of failure raised to the third power, because we have three failures. But there are 10 different ways that could happen, so we multiply it by 10. So we take the point zero two six four and multiply by 10, which gives us point two six four. Now, to paraphrase Colton, fudge, I know you guys don't write, like writing out all the combinations, so I'm going to teach you a calculator function to find the number of combinations without having to write them all out, so that Colton doesn't have to say fudge again. So, okay, listen, because I'm not going to go through this calculator function more than once. Actually, I lied. I'm going to go through it twice for new calculators and old calculators because it looks different. So, um, if we want to find K successes in N trials, your textbook uses the letter K, the calculator uses the letter R. I don't know why, but just know when you see K in your book, it's R in the calculator. So, when finding the number of ways of choosing K or R objects among N total objects, when order doesn't matter, we use what's called a combinatoric to find all the combinations. The number that we get from the combinatoric is what we call the binomial coefficient. So 10 was our binomial coefficient because there were 10 ways to get two successes out of five trials. So the notation is a capital C combinatoric you have a lowercase n as a subscript in front and then a k for the subscript on the other side. Okay. Yeah. So in the calculator it'll be n c r. In the book they'll use k. I don't know. Now, there is also another way you can write it. So you might see it with parentheses and over K. <coughs> now, N is the number of trials. K is the number of successes. So if we were to write this where we had five trials, 
and two successes, we say five choose two. Choose? Choose. Five choose two. <laughs> no. Choose. Like, I choose Maggie, not you, Ty. Boom. You may also see it as, in parentheses, five over two. They mean the same thing. Now, in case you're curious how they actually find it, you do not need to know this formula. You need to know the calculator function. But it takes n type factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. Not in here. She looks like a very excited. It is. Factorial. Three factorial is three times two times one. You take the number and multiply it by each number less than it through one. You don't multiply by zero because then it would all be zeros. Do we have to put this into the calculator? No. But the factorial just do it? Yeah. That's how it finds the answer. So we're going to use the calculator to do 5 choose 2. Can I put my calculator in the way? Yes, sir, Ty. <laughs> All right, so to get your combinatoric, you're going to hit math, which is right below alpha, third one down on the left. Then we're going to go over to prob on the top. And it's number three, N-C-R, not P. So number three. Now... <laughs> Now, um, newer calculators, so when I hit number three, notice it creates little boxes I get to fill in. Yeah. <coughs> I don't have oh, sorry. So for newer calculators, I would hit five, and then I would hit the arrow to the right and hit two. Wait, so for, older, for older calculators, if you go to math, go over to prob, and you choose NCR, Notice that it takes the answer, so you don't want to do it that way on the older calculators. Older calculators, you have to type the number of trials in first. So we have five trials, then I go to math, go over to prob, and CR, and then you're going to type two. Oh. If <coughs> on the newer calculators, 5 choose 2 gives me 10. On the old one, when I type it in, even though they look different, I get the same answer. They look the same. Okay. By the way, if you were to go into math, prob, and choose that, and you have the answer in front of it, you don't have to start over. You can just go to the left and type the number over answer that you really wanted in there. So don't feel like you have to like clear everything out and start from scratch. Just go type over the answer. Awesome. Questions? Awesome. So this is 10. Much easier than writing out all the different combinations and listening to Colton Pests over there. All right. Now I'm going to make you a little frustrated again, but I promise it's not that bad. When you need to find a binomial probability, you have n number of trials, Davis, Probability P of success. If I ask you to find the probability that X equals K, 
you're going to do your combinatoric, the probability of success raised to the number of successes, probability of failure raised to the number of failures. So we just did this. I had you guys find the probability that we had two children with type O blood. I showed you how to do the combinatoric in the calculator. They had five kids, two with type O blood. Probability of type O blood was 0.25. We had two kids with that type blood. And then the probability of failure, not typo blood, raised to the number of failures. We already did this. We did it on the previous page. But for those of you taking the AP exam, if you no. see this on the AP formula sheet, you'll know what it means. Don't freak out. We used it before you knew it. I can't pass away the other one. Yes, you can, David. I will. I believe in I'm you. I'm going to study so hard. Wait, when is the work day? Like, do For you know your day class, it's, it's next Wednesday. 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 So, right. in order to get a uh, college credit this class, in order to get college credit this class, you have, uh, they only take the uh, first attempt at the test? No, I average them. All right. <laughs> We're going to use this formula. So example one, we're going to roll a die five times. We want to count the number of fours that we get. So what is our sample size? How many trials? How many die rolls? Five. What's the probability of success? Probability I get a four. Two. <laughs> One out of five. Six. 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 I was like, you guys don't know what a die looks like anymore? Oh, oh. There's one side of a die that has a four on it. There are six sides total. So, probability that I get one four. Five trials, one success. Probability of success raised to the number of successes. Probability of failure. What is the probability of failure? Five out of six. And how many failures am I going to have? Four. What the heck is going on? Wait, what? Because I'm rolling the die five times. Oh, so how many times? But like, what if you don't? I'm not asking you to find the probability x equals zero. I'm asking what's the probability I get one four. X equals one. You get one four? So five choose one. So I'm gonna go into math, go over to prop, choose my NCR, so five choose one. There are five ways I could get one four, right? It could be the first roll, second roll, third roll, fourth roll, or fifth roll. There's five ways it could happen. So we have to put six in for five. Five. Then I have one six to the first power, which is just one six. And then five six to the fourth. So those are the the three things I multiply by. I'll be right there, Trey. Five times one six times five six. Oops. Parenthesis to the fourth. And I get point four zero two when I round. Miss Whittle. Yes. When you do the five, choose two, and five, choose one, is it always just going to be like them multiplied? No. No? That's just how um, it is. So, so if that were true, five choose three should be 15. Is it going to be like 12 or something? It's 10. Oh, it's also 10? It's also 10. 
Because if you think about it, if I just change my S's and F's back here, right? If I have three successes, that's all the combinations as well. Oh, okay, yeah. So no, it's not just multiplication. So what do we do for older calculators? Five F C R one. Yeah. You gave me five. Yeah. So what does that mean? So what do? It's hey, how can I explain? No, I explain. It's, oh, sure. <laughs> okay. So. All right. And what we get is how many. I'm like, going to skip these examples because they're just practicing using the formula. And I really want to talk about a problem that has a greater than, less than symbol. So we're going to switch over here. We're still, we're still working with the same binomial setting. There's parents who have five children. Probability that their kids have type O blood is 0.25. So to find the probability that exactly three have type O blood, we would do the probability that x equals 3. So we would do 5 choose 3, 0.25 cubed, 0.75 squared. It tells us exactly three kids. Listen to me, not him. <laughs> that might be part of why you're not where I am. Uh, Five, choose three. Aye. Probability of success raised to the number of successes. Probability of failures raised to the number of failures. Same thing over and over. I just made it three instead of two kids this time. Five, choose three. Wait, so I what's the 75? Wait, can we look at good Seventy-five is the probability they have not typo blood. So I already have five choose three in my calculator because Davis asked a question about it. Thank you. And five choose three is ten. So I get ten. And then I'm gonna multiply by 0.25 cubed and 0.75 squared. Ten. We're just using the same formula. I just changed no, I, the exponents. I, no, I understand the formula. Then what's your question? All I did was change exponents. No, I don't have a question. Okay. Five choose three. No, wait. I typed that in wrong. I'm sorry. You guys are like, what is she doing? There we go. Three, two, point zero eight seven nine. Does that match better? Okay. Now, you may be asked to find a greater than or less than probability. So. Should the parents be surprised if more than three of their children have type O blood? Probability X is greater than three comes from us finding the probability that four children have type O blood and adding it to the probability that five children have type O blood. So we're gonna find this probability <laughs> Using the formula, so the five choose four would be five, right? Five, yes, five choose four is five. And then the probability that x equals five. Why is the four inside the parentheses this time? <laughs> no. On the exponent? Yeah. Because it really doesn't matter whether the exponent's inside or outside. No, can I 
Five choose five is just one, yes, Davis. Nice. All right, five choose four is five. Where's the point you put in And then we'd have the point two five to the fourth times point seven five. To the zero? Over here? Yes. Yeah, we have zero failures. Why are you just going to not have Yeah, do we have to put anything in there? Um, what is the thing to the zero power? Zero. Oh, dear Lord. One. <laughs> wow. Wait. Oh. Uh oh. Wait. Uh oh, yeah. I so, just feel like one, so, here we get point zero one four no. seven. In. Wait. Oh, no. Anything to the zero power is one? Yes. Why? So um, I'll answer that in a minute. Let me finish getting the probability. Alright, so on the probability of 5 out of 5, having typo blood, really it's just 0.25 to the fifth, which is 0 0.009. So, to find the probability that three or more children had typo blood, we found the probability 4 do and 5 do, and we're going to add them together. Dude. If Hank was here, he'd probably be quieter and pay attention. No, he would not be quieter. He, Hank he would be slapping. Hank, wait, do you remember Hank? He'd be abusing you. Yeah, Hank would be beating the shit out of Davis <laughs> right now and laughing about it. Hank, we were fishing one time and he threw his hook in it. Okay. Yeah, Hank hooked me through the stomach. And Hank laughed about it while Davis yeah. was damn near crying. I was yeah. laughing. No, rest is <laughs> Hank, I missed my trip somewhere. Alright, Trey. Yeah. How is he allowed to sit there? He can't, I can't see. see. I can't sit there. He couldn't Trey. see. He couldn't see. Oh, these kids I always see. be competitive. Trey. I can't see. It's too close. Trey. Yeah, I listen. <laughs> then go to the back. What's two to the first? He's trying to beat me. Two. Two. What's two squared? <laughs> two cubed. I don't know. Eight. What's <laughs> happening to these numbers? Doubling. Okay, so what if I go backwards? Eight. Go to zero. I would divide, right? Cut them in zero. half? Yeah, like, fill them like a So what's two to the zero? Zero. One. One. Because Did we not learn two. Okay, that actually makes sense now, but like, it does make I'm sense. taking it and cutting it in half. But it works. Zero it, would, it would work with any number, too. If I do three to the first, three squared, three cubed. Like, this is 3, this is 9, this is 27. So if I look at them this way, I'm multiplying by 3. If I look at it the other way, I'm dividing by 3, and 3 divided by 3 is 1. Anything to the zero power is going to be 1. Thank you. I have the first three. Oh, that's the last one.